get interested in someone, boy and girl, let's say. We'll talk about normal straight people, inshallah ta'ala. That's the easy one. I, we understand that. The others, we don't understand it. When you fall into an interest in someone, you go through three stages that scientists have studied. Number one, there is the lust stage, L-U-S-T. When you lust for someone, two hormones are released in your brain. For the men, more testosterone. For the girls, more estrogen. But they both have estrogen and testosterone, except in lesser levels than each other. This hormone does nothing except it serves your reward, your reward center. It's like drugs. Once you feel it the first time, you want to feel it again. No purpose except feeling. Testosterone, estrogen. Once you fulfill that need, the testosterone and estrogen goes away and all you're left with is the after effects. Allahu A'lam what they are. Once you fall into lust, there is a second stage if you continue following that relationship and it's called attraction. When you, fall, when you get to the stage of attraction, it lasts for weeks or months. This usually happens in the halal way, they are the people who are engaged to be married. You have attraction. Attraction releases hormones called dopamine and other hormones and it lessens something called serotonin. Serotonin gives you satisfaction, security and so on. The others, they make you energetic. You start to fantasize a lot. You start to get energetic, start doing things you never did before. And then you say, wow, he's changed me. She has brought out something in me that I've never seen before. He said words to me that no one's ever said to me before. They just flooded me. Brothers and sisters, this is not real. These are just the hormones telling you that. It's like watching a mad movie. Fast and Furious. It lasts for about a few weeks and months. And what happens is that you feel this beautiful thing coming, which is nice in the halal way. Beautiful. Enjoy it in the halal way. It's beautiful. It's one of the best things you can ever, you know, and really embrace it because you're not going to feel it much again later on. What? But, but... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't leave you there. If you follow that relationship, it turns into something beautiful, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this is where the real relationship is. And it's called attachment. This is the husband and wife. This is a family attachment. And attachment releases a beautiful hormone called oxytocin. And that is the hormone that makes you feel secure, safe, loved, purpose, reason, importance self-esteem value when you get married everybody values you and they look at you differently isn't that correct I'll give you an example if there is a relationship of boyfriend and girlfriend and they don't want to get married the halal way they say oh we're just getting to know each other girlfriend boyfriend let me tell you something they say what's wrong with it all right what's worse a man or woman cheating on their husband and wife when they're married or a girlfriend boyfriend cheating on each other when they're not married which one's worse when they're married but what's the difference between being married and having a relationship outside of it in the same way they're still sleeping together they still look at each other like you're for me i'm for you nobody else can touch you they're still doing the same. they share wealth together sometimes they have children together they live together 20 years de facto partnered not married what's the difference a word the only difference is one is commitment and value. The other one is not commitment and not as much value. He's not really valuing her. She's not really valuing him because they're not ready to commit. Wallahi, I've spoken to non-Muslims about this all the time. And they say, yeah. One non-Muslim lady says, we've been in a relationship for, for like uh, seven years. And I've been telling him, let's get married. And he's just not ready. I said, well, if he values you, he'll get married. He goes, yeah, I want to value me. Value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have honored the son of Adam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only tells us things that honor us. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said. He told us, a man or a woman, whom a person, a man or a woman with prestige, power and beauty comes to them and calls them. Now, you might be thinking, well, <laughs> this other young fellow I remembered now. He comes to me, he goes, Astaghfirullah Azim, I committed zina. And I said, oh, then you've got to repent to Allah and so on and so forth. He goes, but I'm safe, brother, I'm safe. I go, what do you mean you're safe? He goes, she's not a woman of power and beauty. <laughs> no, no, no. 
When the Prophet ﷺ said a woman of her power and beauty, what he's saying, what he's saying is, any man or woman that your community or society see as desirable. So it could be a celebrity. It could be someone who's in the olden days wasn't really pretty. It could be a woman with really short hair and got red and yellow all over it. Doesn't matter. If she's desirable, that's the woman. The idea is whatever is more desirable, Allah subhanahu wa puts you under his shade because you are struggling more. Anyway, even zina with a normal person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses it. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And those who do not commit adultery or fornication. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Whoever does this act shall surely meet a terrible wrath. وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا And we placed in hellfire humiliated. إِلَّا مَنْ تَعْبْ Except he or she who repents. وَآمَنْ Renews their faith. وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And does good deeds in return. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيَّعَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ These people, Allah will transform their bad deeds into good deeds. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. All your past sins are gone. Brothers and sisters, some people they say, I'll have a girlfriend or boyfriend now, I'll commit the haram, because then I will repent later. We say to you, you are like the brothers of Yusuf. They said, we will kill Yusuf or throw him in the deserts, and then we'll repent later. But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied. They suffered and if, had, if they had died in that instance, they will go to hellfire for murder or for doing what they did for Yusuf alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left them alive to happen to repent, alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, let's look at this hadith. Problems happen in the future. I want to tell you a few statistics. It is estimated that 84,000 abortions, you know what abortions are? When they go to the hospital, a woman is pregnant, doesn't want the baby, and tells the doctor to kill it and get rid of it. They put forceps inside into the uterus, and while the baby is alive, they dissect it organ by organ, bit by bit, as it's alive. There are estimated 84,000 abortions per year in Australia. In Adelaide, the, 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 they, keep, they keep record, not... not the other states they don't, but they estimate as 84,000 abortions per year, according to the research in the Medical Journal of Australia. And they are between the ages of 15 and 44. As for teenagers, between the ages of 15 and 19, it is estimated around 10,000 teenage abortions between the ages of 15 and 19 in Australia alone. 10,000 abortions of teenagers uh, with teenage pregnancy between 15 and 19 according to the ABC the world today report it is estimated that it is 56 million abortions per year worldwide 56 million abortions per year worldwide and that's just what's recorded as for what's not recorded Allahu alam 56 million murders per year and Allah says وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ Do not kill your children because you fear you will not be able to raise them, provide them. We are the ones who will provide them and you. Medical specialists are today calling, excuse me, for better sex education in Australia. Wow, now we need sex education because it's getting out of hand. To primary school students. Primary school students. To, Grade 3, 4, 5, 6, sex education. And for contraceptives to be made more available to teenagers in an effort to reduce the nation's teen pregnancy and abortion rates, according to the ABC's The World Today report. Why do they get abortions? Unwanted pregnancies. They're too small, too young. We were just having a talk before, this idea of teenager. Never existed in Islam. Barakallah fiqh. I learned it from Sheikh Muhammad today. No words teenager in Islam, you're either a child or an adult. So when we tell them you're still a child, but they're actually adults, they can reproduce, they can get married, they can have children, they can do everything. We say it's cute. It's cute. But if she gets pregnant, you stupid idiot. That's what we call them. Why? We don't help them, we've not allowed them. And then they go to the hospital and get an abortion and kill babies. We teach them to be murderers. So, Haram sex between teenagers is halal for them. And some Muslims think, what's the problem with that? And they don't see the result that a murder is happening. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا 
Do not come close to zina. It's a dirty act. Its path, its road in the end is bad. Here is one example. Murder of babies. Sometimes teenagers don't know what to do. They're afraid either because of their parents or their culture or their tradition or because whatever it is is out on the street, babies end up in the trash cans. Orphanages are built. Brothers and sisters, lastly, STIs. You know what STIs are? Sexually transmitted infections or sexually transmitted diseases. These are more today than ever before. Prophet ﷺ said, new diseases will appear that didn't appear before. Listen to this. Wallahi, this is staggering research. I saw this. In the Australian ABC Health Reports, it says, one of the STIs called gonorrhea, you know what gonorrhea is? It's one of the STDs, sexual transmitted diseases. It's very, very popular, very common. Only gonorrhea, 19,000 were infected in 2015. 19,000 were infected in 2015. In 2006, nine years ago, only 9,000 were reported to be infected. Look how much more have been infected in only these years. And they're saying that there is a, a tremendous rise in STDs as the years go by. Because zina and adultery and fornication is also becoming more and more. Wallah, it's becoming more and more. There is a, all these STDs, chlamydia, syphilis, all these names that they brought. They are on the rise. And in Australia, chlamydia is the highest form of STDs. I had a sister without saying her name anonymous she said to me what do I do I have to tell my future husband the guy who's asked for my hand do I have to tell him that I've got STD Muslim sister in hijab everything beautiful sister loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but unfortunately in the past she fell into haram unfortunately these STDs don't just go away you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they still stay should I tell him? I said, of course you have to tell him. But why? Islam covers the sin. You shouldn't tell your sins. I said, that's different. He's going to get infected. If you get pregnant, your children are going to get infected unless you get it treated. And when we talk about treatment, it doesn't make it go away. Bacteria goes away, but there are some of them that don't go away. You have to keep it under treatment, like eczema. If you've got children who've got eczema, you put this cream on, it just manages it. If a woman hasn't managed her STD, and she is pregnant, gives birth, the child has an STD for the rest of their life. How bad of an end it is. Did you know that some STDs don't show until six months later? Some of them don't have symptoms at all and they're in you. And subhanAllah, what an amazing thing scientists and doctors have said. They said, and they keep repeating this, the surest way to avoid transmission of STI is to abstain from sexual contact or to be in a long-term mutual monogamous relationship with a partner who has been tested and is known to be uninfected. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, stay away, don't come close, don't do this? Isn't that right? This is already 1,400 years ago, Prophet told us about this.